Hi, so my name is Sandy Baird, and we're here for our monthly show called What's Going On? And there's a lot going on in the world, including Happy International Women's Day to whomever chooses to watch us, and also to Eric Añero, a colleague of mine who just got back from Africa. So we'll be talking about what's going on in the other part of the world, the non-NATO part of the world, and see what's going on in that part of the world during this um, disastrous war in Ukraine. Um, anyway, happy International Women's Day. Before we begin, I want to mention something about that holiday. That holiday was a holiday that was first celebrated and created in the former Soviet Union in 1917. The Soviet Union, of course, is Russia. That was the result, the Soviet Union, of the Bolshevik Revolution, which occurred there in 1917 as Russia emerged defeated, essentially, in World War I. At that time, in 1917, then, the Russians gave up, and they gave up huge amounts of territory to the Germans, and they essentially surrendered after, in 1917, the war ended in 1918. And at that time, the women of the Soviet Union got together to celebrate peace to celebrate women all throughout the world, women and girls, but also to celebrate peace. We all should remember this in Russia in 1917 and see whether or not we can consider peace between Russia again and the NATO countries right now. So Eric, you were recently in Africa, so what's going on there? What did you find there? I was astonished, actually, I should say, by what we found there. And by the way, I just want to point out for our audience that this little country Right here, at least compared to the rest of the world, that's what Ukraine is. Surround, well, this is the Russian Federation, Ukraine, and this is what where you were in Africa, right? In yeah, Ivory in Coast. Ivory Coast yeah. Okay. And then I was also in Ghana. But before I go there, yeah. I would like to piggyback on what you said about the women and think about all the women in Africa that are still uh, fighting to get more rights and uh, that need, you know, uh, uh, the, the help from the women in the West. They or need who? the help from all people all in the West. All people. For, and Men then, even like you, which yeah, I'm sure yeah. you do support those <laughs> women, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. And then back to the situation of uh, the war in Ukraine and then how it's being viewed from Africa. I was also surprised to see that most of the people on the streets of Africa, but even uh, within the political realm, are you know have some sympathy for uh, for Putin and Russia and Russia. I was uh, surprised, so I tried to understand what was going on, and I realized when I asked people that they're not uh, condoning what is going on in Ukraine uh, as far as the war or the invasion, you know, uh, you name it, but it's more like they are, uh, they have sympathy for someone that stands against the West. By what, what, what do you mean by the West also? The West, I mean by, you know, all the former European colonial powers. Okay, that's key, though, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Yes. Okay, go ahead. For example, France, mm -hmm. in Ivory Coast, you know. And that's where you were, Ivory uh, yeah, Coast. Yeah, in Ivory Coast first. Ivory Coast has been independent from France since the 1960s, but it wasn't a real independence. Up to now, France has its knees on the throat of more than 15 countries over there. The new generation is not, no longer the generation of my father, of my grandfather, who were colonial beings. What the do you mean? Colonial beings meaning that they were sub subjects of the um, French empire. They Not, were, yeah. They were. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother went to school, you know, uh, uh, singing the, the French... Marseillaise. National, yeah, Marseillaise. Uh, 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 learning about more of the geography and the history of France rather than that of her country. I grew up, you know, learning more about my country. I went to school with, you know, friends in Europe that today maybe are, you know, leading their own countries. But my generation doesn't want to be seen as a colonial being anymore they want at least to be respected and the reason as, as Af africans africans but are also as citizens of the world human right. being that's it so uh, the west unfortunately the european powers 
and they ally well, the, the Western US. European powers. The Western European powers. Right, correct. And they ally, like from, you know, Canada, Canada and the US, and fortunately have kept that, you know, a status quo of, you know, uh, uh, you know a colonial relationship of uh, Western West supremacy. Like, meaning, like, uh, for the past 20 years, nothing has been done to change that. You have a new generation that wants change, that doesn't want to be a, 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 a citizen of countries where the West just come to get resources, mm -hmm. but just want to, uh, to do their business, you know? Uh, I, I, and, and I think that the West hasn't changed the way they do business with Africa. Now, Africa has also historical right. relationship with the, the Russians, for example. Wait a minute, wait a minute. let's go back to something. So it, I t uh, when I studied European history, it turned out, to my surprise, mm -hmm. that between like 1878 mm -hmm. and 1917, the capitalist powers, mm -hmm. France, England, then Germany, mm -hmm. um, and Italy mm -hmm. too, and the United States basically conquered Africa yes. and split it up between them. Mm -hmm. And there was a big conference, the Congress of Berlin, Berlin in, 18, yeah. in 1878, where this section was considered French and this section was considered the British. British. And what you're saying is that they used their imperial power to kind of rob the mm -hmm. African nations of its resources. Yes. Is that true? Yes. And then, of course, you know, that, these are things of the past we taught. But unfortunately, it hasn't changed. Right. It hasn't changed. So you have, uh, you, have you know, uh, in the name of this agreement at, in Berlin and Yalta, you have the Yalta. U, yeah, you have your U.S. condoning right. France, you know, uh, you know, continuing to, to you know, uh, brutally exploiting the resource of Africans. Right. You know, that's why today, even though I grew up with, you know, a portrait of GFK, JFK in my house, we have like that sympathy to, uh, towards the U.S., more and more Africans are linking the U.S. to that brutal, you know, exploitation of France and other colonial powers in... Well, France in your section of Africa. Yeah, yeah France oh. in my section of Africa. This is why, you know, uh, uh, you see today the streets in Africa being in favor of Putin as a man or uh, Russia as a nation that stands against, you know, those who were supposed to be their friends, but, you know, that are doing, according to them, worse than the, uh, the Russian. I take, for example, what happened in Libya. Oh, right, right, which was... Deep Deeply influenced by Italians, yeah, correct? Yeah, uh, Libya, and then, you know, Libya, of course, Gaddafi wasn't an angel. No, of course. Gaddafi was I guess we all have to say that before yeah, we discuss yeah, anything, right? He wasn't right? An, an angel at all. Right. But Gaddafi, and Libya, by the way, is up is here. Right here yeah. yeah. But Gaddafi was kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, maintaining some kind of peace over there, and then, uh, you know, uh, the resources were pretty much, you know, shared, like, I'm not saying equally, but... Can we put it this way, that Libby, that Gaddafi was looking out for the interests of okay. Libya? Yes. Okay? Now, whether or not he was corrupt and all that stuff is yeah. a different question. Yes. And then he was like a Libyan martyr. Exactly. But the European yeah. convinced Obama to go bomb, I mean, bombard, you know, uh, Libya. Right. Libya is a total mess today. Including, to including what, a reintroduction of slavery. <laughs> yeah. Right. Libya is a total mess today, you know, comparing to what Libya was. All Africans wanted to go to Libya. Really? Some Why? Tell me. couldn't go to Europe. Because in Libya, Libya was kind of, you know, well, I mean, uh, developed more than the rest of the, the continent. Some well, the uh, Libya is also Arab. Yeah, Libya is Arab. Okay. Libya has money. Right. And then yeah. Gaddafi was, you know, of course, buying... A scoundrel. Support. Yeah. yeah. So... What happened in Libya had a bitter taste for most Africans because all the hoodlums and you know, uh, uh, you know, all the bandits that were you know used for the war in you know Libya came down to the Sahel to other countries, and today it's the mess: Burkina Faso, Mali, uh, uh, Niger, Mauritania. All these countries are under the menace of, you know, uh, the you know terrorists, under, yeah. you know, the threat of terrorists and fundamentalists that want to occupy the place. So 
for most of Africans, both the intelligentsia and the people of the street, this is something that they will never forget. Okay, so but they blame their mess, whatever messes exist yeah. in Africa right now, on the old colonial powers, yes. which it's France, yeah. England, mm -hmm. Uh, Italy, yeah, Italy, I mean, uh, and the United States yeah. now, correct? Yeah, United States, not because United States was a colonial power, but because United States has some, uh, uh, like, as an alliance with these colonial, yeah. I mean, colonial powers, and then they will expect the U.S., which is seen as the, you know, the the stronghold of democracy to at least make sure that these countries, these European countries are not treating, you know, the Africans anymore like colonial beings. Like today, the US is doing something very great, like, re, uh, you know, revisiting the uh, ra ra racist past. Today, we're hearing about black lives matter. But how can black lives matter only in the US and not matter in Africa? Right. This make me question the sincerity of this assertion that black lives matter, because the black lives in Africa also want democracy. They also want to have hospitals. They also want to have education. When the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is crippling the economies by uh, adopting like measures like the Austerity. structural adjustment, mm -hmm. That makes, you know, I remember I went to school, 60% of the budget when I was going to university in, in Ivory Coast was devoted to education. After the IMF came with the ad a structural adjustment, it went down to, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, like 10% or what. But, you know, all the schools were dismantled. The hospitals were like dismantled just because this country had to pay back their debts. Okay, so why do you connect the IMF with the U.S.? Uh, you know, it's Bretton Woods. Right. I mean, the, in, the, in, yeah, so it's like the right. institutions of Bretton Woods. And, and Bretton like, Woods was in the 30s, correct? Yes. France has control of the IMF, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and the U.S. have like more, more of the control of the World Bank. So, but it's all the same. same yeah. You know, so you know, uh, uh, it's about time. You know, the 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 U.S. and the West change the way of looking at Africa. Okay. Let's let's turn to the other uh, places in the world that have not been reported on. Mm. As certainly, it doesn't appear that there's been any reportage about who favors whom mm. from Latin America. No protests that I know of, pro Zelensky, mm -hmm. pro Ukraine, nothing. Yeah. And I and but today there was an interesting. Headline from Nicolas Maduro mm -hmm. in Venezuela, and also we know something about Cuba. Mm -hmm. So it occurred to me that if you think about it, what's happening in Latin America? Do they favor uh, Zelensky and Ukraine or the West, or what are their feelings? I suspect they're pro-Russia. Yeah, but you know, in this in this uh, uh, situation, like the Western media tend to always look at who's the bad guy, who's the good yeah, guy, I know. and look for, you know, who follows who or what. The real problem here is like about, you know, does the West have any credit, any, any credibility? Any credibility. That's the real question. Right, right. Because I'm pretty sure no one wants his country to be invaded by another superpower. But, you know, we have to put everything in a context of geopolitical, you know, struggles and fights. So it's like, how can countries like France, that are still oppressing, right. oppressing, you know, countries in Africa, have the right to say, you know, something? This is the real question. And then the people like Maduro, like the West is giving them, you know, enough water to put them <laughs> to to put in the meal because. Like, uh, okay, so let's look at Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Also, look, you could also uh, extend that to Nicaragua yeah. also and Cuba, all of whom, Cuba's been cautious, but yeah. all of whom, mm -hmm. Nicaragua and Venezuela start there, have come out and said either very little or have been pro-Putin. Mm -hmm. Putin, yeah. Okay, so why is that? It's because, this is what I think, mm -hmm. and then I want your comment. 
the United States has its sphere of influence, yes. and it's had that since the Monroe Doctrine in 1823, mm -hmm. which said that this republic yep. of the United States mm -hmm. of America controlled all of the rest of the Americas, and that it would not allow any mm -hmm. other foreign powers ever to mess up that control. Okay, mm -hmm. this is our United States. I don't want to say our because yeah. I don't know what this government is all about. It's my country though, and I love this country. Okay, so this republic then now, that's its backyard. Yeah. Okay. What is the backyard, for instance, of, this, of Russia? It's this area of Eastern Europe, yeah. and also I, Asia, much yeah. of Asia. Uh -huh. So when Putin perceived, I would guess, mm -hmm. Just like in the United States, when President Kennedy perceived a weapons threat in Cuba that were put there by the Russians, when NATO began to extend its power this way, I think Putin said, no, we're not going to allow that. Does that justify his invasion? No. But I want you to think about that. Mm -hmm. What would the United States have done in a similar circumstance? What did they do when the Russians put missiles in Cuba? That's, that's a big question. That's why, you know, all these countries are questioning, you know, all this fuss around, you know, Ukraine. I mean, it's the same agreements that allow former colonial, uh, colonial powers from Europe to have their backyard. They extend even the backyard on another continent. Like France has like a large sphere of influence here. Where, in Africa. So that's its backyard? That agreement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's the agreement. Why does it? You know, uh, is it uh, per pertaining not only for uh, the Americas and not for Russia? So I guess Russia also, you know, is trying to defend the turf. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, and and then they don't see NATO as a good idea in the neighborhood. Well, if you uh, let's go back a little bit to what Russia really is and what it isn't. All right, Russia is this huge federation at this point that extends all the way to Asia. Since the 19th century, mm -hmm. if you think about it, Russia has been invaded by the West, yeah. beginning with Napoleon, mm -hmm. correct, in about 1812. Yeah. That in, those invasions temporarily were, went into abeyance on the First and the Second World War. I don't know how many Americans know that Russia was our ally in both wars. So it was the U.S., France, Britain, and Russia mm -hmm. which fought against the Germans, correct? Yeah. In World War I and in World War II. Mm -hmm. But in both of those wars, the Russians paid the highest price. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. especially in Europe against the Germans. Mm -hmm. The Russians had the most casualties, and they were perceived as at least a very important victor mm -hmm. in defeating the Nazis. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So, with that history, 1945 comes, Second World War over, mm -hmm. when there should have been peace between the U.S. and Russia. Mm -hmm. Immediately begins the Cold War the Cold against War. Russia. Right? Yeah. And from 1945 until present, the NATO alliance has been an alliance directed against Russia. And the Russians have said repeatedly, not in our backyard, right? Yeah. But, you know, we, we should also, uh, you know, uh, uh, look at the fact that, you know, also Russia tried to also have their own sphere sure, of influence. Sure, sure. You know, always, of, always, like, always. A lot of countries across the, you know, mostly the, the countries that, we're, We're in Eastern Europe. You know, of you know, yeah. Eastern Europe, in Africa, a lot of countries, even South Africa, for example, doesn't want to take like a very, you know, uh, uh, a strong position, uh, like with regard to the invasion of uh, of uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, because Russia helped South Africa fight the oppressive regime in you know, the white. You know, yeah, like in uh, the apartheid regime. They did. Yeah, Russia. Helped. So did Cuba. Yeah, so did Cuba. Right. Uh, Mali, for example, that is kicking out France from you know, their country. Has now? Been, yeah, now has been like a good, you know, a, a, a historical partner of, uh, of Russia? Russia. So, you know, it, it was fair. A camp wanted to push for liberalism. Another one was like for socialism. But today, the world has changed. It's like other, other powers and mid-sized power are emerging. It's a fair competition now. Between 
I mean, the, the whole world, like you have like you have Turkey that is yeah. doing business in Africa, China is there, and Russia. Russia is there. Russia is today in Africa. I know China too. And, yeah, China very much. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean for the U.S.? The U.S. risk to lose their sympathy. I mean, lose Africa. I know if they continue to follow the European powers that are looking at Africa just as a place of subhumans who are not, you know, uh, capable. Uh, capable of doing, you know, anything. But what do, how do the Russians or the Chinese look at Africans? You know, uh, someone was telling me, do you think that, you know, uh, the, the, the Russians are less white supremacists than that? I said, you know what? They don't bring that when they come to do business, mm -hmm. rather than the U.S. or the, the European that have been only given condoms to Africa for the past 20 years mm. under you know, the assumption that the whole continent will die from AIDS, rather than looking for ways to create, I mean, a, a, a dynamic, you know, market over there where Africans can do business. Nothing is comparable to what the U.S. have achieved in 200 years. Nothing. Legacy of culture, economy, anything. You keep you going to Africa today and then you talk about the U.S., you will have the same sympathy, you know, about the U.S. Uh, I mean, no matter what politically, you know, the governments are doing. So uh, 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 even if China today was to, uh, to, to, uh, to surpass or even to get closer to what the U.S. is, it would have just been because the U.S. has been the pioneer and then China has been able to copy mm -hmm. or to look at it. So, you know, uh, if the U.S. doesn't change that perspective of looking at African countries only as like, you know, second class citizens. And exploitable. We, yeah. And then we can help, just help, AIDS. It's time for business. We want in Ivory Coast. People in Ivory Coast want to buy cheese from Vermont that is even getting sometimes better than cheese from France. Mm. You know? Yeah. They want to like do business with the They would rather know, do business Vermont. with the US than yeah. France. I mean they want to be able to do business with any country, mm -hmm. you know, with respect to, you know, human rights, you know, like we not they don't want to be forced to do business with a country like France. There's so much that people want to buy from the US rather than being, you know, locked into a, a, a sphere of influence from France or Great Britain. It's a new world. The new generation wants to do business with China, with uh, Russia. Russia, with the U.S., and they don't want to be forced to do that. This is the new world. Any power, any country, any superpower or empire that doesn't understand that will have China and Russia, you know, uh, take the... The, you know, uh, get the, the, the cake. Well, that's, but, but there's also another policy that the United States has pursued, particularly in Latin America. They sanction everybody. I mean, the, the government of the United States puts heavy-duty sanctions on Cuba. What are they supposed to do? Sit there and not be able to buy anything from anyone? So Cuba has always been allied, yeah. more or less, with Russia. Yeah. And that is, that is what's happening today, is that Cuba feels more sympathy for Putin than it does for Zelensky or, or, or for the West, yeah. what we call the West. I know that, you know, the world is not, I mean, the world is not a, a, kin, I mean, a, a playground and a kindergarten. Mm -hmm. That you know, it's right. about you know the world is tough. You know, you know, you never know what you know the Russians you know hide, uh, conceal. You know, when they deal with the U.S. Of you course. Know. But you know, uh, today nobody can win a war with nukes or whatever. Oh even, yeah, they they can blister the whole world. You know, it won't go anywhere. But even if China start today, they know that you know it's the end of the world. I mean, it's like so nobody will do that. There will be small conflicts here and there. But it's, this is not a small conflict. Yeah, it's time for the world to look at how we're going to do business. Today, anything that happened in the U.S., a guy in the bush in Africa knows about it. Really? Back in the day. How come, how come Americans don't know about all this stuff? Because, you know, we have a condescending attitude towards the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you are humble enough, even if you are the mightiest, if you are humble enough, 
you will learn about yeah. you know, what's going yes. on. And then today, the the uh, the you know uh, the press is horrible. Yeah, and it's I mean. Today, like with your cell phone, you know what is going on in, in America, like as, as soon as it happens. So we have to be in a world of cooperation because nobody can win any war, you know, because like... Uh, Shouldn't this be obvious to the U.S. after Iraq? It takes time. It takes time for a mighty, I mean, a mighty power like the U.S. to change. It's like a, a huge change. It will take time. It will take like Americans themselves, and yes. it will take the right. people that are right. call, calling themselves progressive. I know to do that because they are also. I'm very, I'm very uh, uh, surprised that you know you'll find among those who are progressive uh, some people that you know are camping on uh, <laughs> on their grounds, like you know the rest of you know. If you're not among them, you're the devil. Mm -hmm. Today, there are nuances now. This, it's no longer one side and the other one. Even China is probably an ally of Russia, yep. but China also has its card concealed. Yeah, yeah. Whatever does. will happen to uh, Russia maybe could be in, in their favor. So it's like this, you know, it's like moving. Well, but the, the, there was a really interesting article, and I think, I don't know how uh, much longer we have, maybe a little bit, but there was a very interesting article Okay, let me go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. It seemed to me that this war in Ukraine started almost immediately under the Biden administration. And I would say that Russia, this is a preemptive war on the part of Russia. They are preemptively entering Ukraine. And that, to me, as a moral kind of person, is really a capital sin, that mm -hmm. they have done this, yeah. that they have invaded yeah. unilaterally another country. Okay, so let's... Let's put that aside for a moment. Mm -hmm. But that there are underlying causes of why they did it, which is not to justify it, yeah. but to say that they had their reasons. And it doesn't seem that the press is covering any of that. All the press is doing is stoking up further war by labeling Putin a madman, evil, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. He has a strategy. This is what I think happened. He has a strategy. He has to. Yeah. I think there has been a tacit agreement with China mm -hmm. that allows Putin to do this mm -hmm. because he knows China has their back. That to me, okay, and remember that that was a foreign policy that should have always been avoided by mm -hmm. the United States. Yeah. The United States never should have adopted any policy, it appears to me, that would drive Russia and China together. That's a, what, what on earth is going on with that? If Russia and China are together, I don't think that the United States, I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine now what's going to happen to the United States. Yeah, and then Europeans are dependent on Russia. It's a new Yeah, well, so is so, the United so, States. So, so, I mean, sanction... But more importantly, <laughs> we're dependent on China. Yeah. So, so it's like even uh, like, uh, uh, like shooting a gun in, on your That's own. Right. Yeah, so... Uh... I got an email from a, a Russian friend of mine who mm -hmm. said, we not only shot ourselves in the foot... Yeah that we have yeah. shot ourselves everywhere. Everywhere. You know, by doing this, by driving those two superpowers together. I'll say one thing about the former President Trump. Most people don't even like to hear anything he said. Mm -hmm. But he clearly had a different foreign policy toward Russia. Mm -hmm. He wanted, as you said, to do business, business in Russia. It's time for business. You know, there's no more like this. Uh, and then Russia, Russia was clever. I mean, Russia is pulling the, the U.S. back to the, you know, Cold War era. I know. Which, is, which will trigger, you know, I militarism know. and all these things. I know. And but, gun sales. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the gun sales people of the world must be thrilled. Yeah, we don't need that. There is a need for a profound discussion about what is going on. But, and people have to understand that it's not like a villain against the rest right, of the world. Right, but that's the way the press perceives it. Yeah, because the press, they like it. They Why? always find a good guy and a bad guy because this is how... That is not true of the foreign press. It is true of our press, and I don't understand the idiocy of them. I don't get it. Why aren't the American people being better informed about this? Because the, the, the traditional press is dying, so they're looking for anything. What do you mean by that? Newspapers? Because newspapers, because today, you know, uh, people get the news from, from, I mean, which is not a good thing, but the traditional media has lost their credibility. 
they have lost the credibility. What, and the, the, the newspapers? The newspapers. The newspapers for long, because they get advertisement. I have, I have, I have, I have been a, a reporter. For I, CNN, for, right? Yeah, I've been a stringer for CNN. I've worked for The Voice of America and other newspapers. And I know that, you know, how much advertisement or which government finances your operation have an influence on your, you know, on your editorial. Mm -hmm. So I, I know. There aren't any more editorials in half of the press. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, like the free press. I used to be big and fat. Yeah. Nothing. Now we need people, we need citizens to sit down and discuss. Even here in Vermont, we need to sit down. I haven't seen any debates where people can exchange their ideas. It's either one side of, you know, one spectrum of the press, another spectrum, I mean, side of the spectrum, of, and then people are fighting, you know, uh, like a proxy war through the, <laughs> the yeah. media they, that they support. We need to sit down and discuss. Like this? Yeah, like this. Go into the issues and then understand what is going on, that it's not only a villain that is being, you know, persecuted in Russia, it's, it's uh, the consequence of action that have been taken by NATO. Decades. Decades ago, it's like, and, and then there's a huge risk. Right now, Africa is paying already for that war. Which prices, one? Prices are, you know. Here uh, they're, yeah, they're yeah. yeah. You know, wheat is, I mean, prices up. You know, soon they won't be able to operate anything because they're dependent on, 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 gas. on, on gas. They produce oil that is being popped by, you know, French companies, British companies. In and Africa? Then in Africa, refined elsewhere, and then brought back mm -hmm. for them to pay. They produce a ch a cacao, and then that cacao has been exported raw to uh, the U.S., and then returned to them, you know, as a... Guess what else? <laughs> Heroin. Hep, you see? Morphine. Morphine. Everything, even I medicine. Mm -hmm. So, uh, me, um, I like, I have liked the U.S. since I was a kid. That's why I like, I, I came. And you came America. here, right? Yeah. That's why I want the U.S. To do to, better. To do better. We can do better. In Africa, it won't be a militarism that will make us win the war over there. We have to win the hearts of the people. We have to be genuine. We have to bring development. We have to bring business. Because products that are made in America so far are better than most of the, you know, the goods that are made around the globe. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have argument to sell. We can sell things to Africa without a gun on you know, the, you know, the head of the people over there. We have like we have good industries. I've seen what is going on in, in, in here in Vermont. I've seen how cheese, cheese. I mean, even wine. I brought a yeah. uh, Californian wine to my dad, who is an aficionado of you know white, uh, uh, you know uh, French wine. He and he believe. lives where in Abidjan? In Abidjan, he couldn't believe that that wine was coming from California. California. No. <laughs> He thought it was a wine from uh, from France or from you know these. Uh, so he's a francophile. He's a francophile, but he's changing. Mm -hmm. He's changing because you know he wants you know his grandkids to be able to talk to an American kid as equal, mm -hmm. as equal. The past is the past. Now we want like a new. So yeah. also you you said and you said a lot of people have said that there's China's all over Africa too. Yeah. What do they want in return? Are they going to exact a, a price for the? Is it imperialism on behalf of China and Russia when they are in there? China China is definitely is looking for. I mean, it's some the new imperialism is that is of it economy. China? Okay, okay. China is not there to uh, conquer, not with the military. No, you know, mili I mean, they have some military to protect, you know, the, the ships going Where? through the place like uh, East, I mean, uh, uh, the Horn of Africa and like around uh, uh, Somalia and Djibouti or all this because China is doing more and more business with the continent. Their ships are, you know, going through, you know, the, the routes here. So they need the military to be able to protect their right. business. Right, okay. There. China is there for business. China is not an angel. No, no, who no. I do, Yes, I <laughs> get it. I get it. Yeah. Not an angel. But, you know, today, and Mugabe said 
Mugabe one, from from uh, from uh, from Zaire, uh, right? Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. You know, who was like a good boy by Western standard for a until, long time until he was deceived by Tony Blair and uh, and 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 and, and uh, uh, President Clinton. So he went to become their enemy. Mm. But Mugabe said one day, the European raped us. Now we have the choice to go to bed with China without being raped. Wow. It's a big difference. So we're mm. choosing who is our partner. You know, mm. so. Uh, That's if, really powerful. If the Europeans and the Americans, the Canadians, come no longer as, you know, uh, you know, yeah, they will do better than China. But is they're not any, doing that right now. They're not doing that. Is there anything that is comparable to, uh, you know, the legacy of Elvis Presley, Hollywood, you know, uh, Nothing. The, the fight Absolutely for the not. women's know that. rights, right. the fight for the women's rights, the fight for, for you know, uh, workers until, you know, uh, uh, Labor Day became a day for shopping. Yeah, it was a day of you know, uh, 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 you know, the fight workers. of the workers, and then it came from here. So we have to we have go to back be, to that. Yeah, to go, go back to that. I think we should stop right now, but the conversation <laughs> is not going to be over, I would guess. So, last thing, what are you predicting? What's going to happen in this war? Well, today the world is like, it's it's, like what? It's unpredictable. Anything can happen. I mean, but you know, I'm pretty sure you know. Uh, Ukraine will be uh, destroyed. I know, just which is to terrible. Serve the interest of you know superpowers. So this is what I said to my sister who lives in Canada. This is a proxy war oh. between Russia and the U.S. Yeah. People don't want to hear that though. They want to hear about it's only about Ukraine. Ukraine is the battlefield. Yeah. And Ukraine. the Ukraine, I hate to say it, but it's going to be destroyed. In Africa, we say when two elephants are fighting. Yeah. It's the uh, the grass on the ground that suffers, and Ukraine is that grass. It's a horrible thing, yeah. a horrible realization. Yeah. But thank you. Maybe oh, we'll be back pleasure. in a month, right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. And all my sympathy to the people of Ukraine. Me too. Yeah. And to the people, really, yeah. everywhere right everywhere now. Everywhere right, right now. Right. Mm. Okay, thank you, Eric, and we'll see you soon.